Okay, here we are doing the Space Limited Accomplishments Interval. I'm Lance Ash, and this is Bonnie Ash. Hello. And we were just discussing purging, uh, purging excess stuff from our domicile. And uh, you went through your clothes and found, would you say, two bags worth of stuff? To no, just one bag. I stopped at one bag, but I know there's going to be two or three bags of stuff I can get rid of. To these donate. Things, yeah. These are things that I have not worn since 2016. So, yeah, it's five years on. I should get rid of these things. Yeah, I've still got, I've got a whole bunch of um, shorts that I don't wear, but I'm going to keep them because I make it through a shorts wearing phase again. <laughs> you never know. I'll never do that. Well, I found a, I, I, normally I would paint in my athletic shorts that I wear to bed also, but I found some the other day, um, like sort of an olive green, and I started wearing those to paint in. Yeah, I can see wearing things like that around the house, maybe. But I'm not a shorts person, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I feel that when you get to a certain age, that's, you know... When I went for that physical exam the other week, my pants, I had those off, and my skin was pasty white and seen sun and months. It was really embarrassing. Um, several years ago, we went through all of our books... We probably have more books in our house than anybody outside the library, the, the, our, was, our, lo our local library. Yeah, that was our reputation when I was on the library board. And uh, several years ago, we got rid of... 5,000. No, it wasn't 5,000. Yeah, it was. No, there's no way it was that many. But we counted them. You counted them. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, we got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. But and we now have... Right at again, coming up to eight thousand books again. I think. Do you think we really have that many? Yeah, we do. I'm the one who has to dust them. They are in every nook and cranny of our house. Peter has some stacked in his floors. I need to find the children's books and see which ones were missing because I want to get some of the ones I had as a kid that the kids tore up uh, back, like uh, What's in the Dark, which is a great book. When I install the book nook, we have the back walls dedicated to science fiction. And I count it close to 500 just in the science fiction section. And then opposite that are equal number. And then on the opposite side of that shelf, it's a two, two sided shelf, are an equal number. So that's 1500 right there. And then that whole wall along the library, I don't know how many damn are in there. And then I've got a few books on the shelves in the um, office area. And then we have three shelves full in the living room. Oh, and that shelf unit in the dining room has half of it filled up with children's books that we just don't feel like we should get rid of. You found this shelf silver stain there this week. And then we have more in Peter's room. And then you have books in your room that line both walls, plus sit inside the windows. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six bookcases in my room. So we have a lot of books, sweetie. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that Shel Silverstein. Um, I thought about, we have a CD of him reading some of his poems, and I thought about bringing it, but... Um, number one, I forgot, but number two, he is kind of, he's kind of irritating the way that he reads his poems where he just over emotes and makes his voice all crackly and weird and... He got to be stoned or drunk to appreciate him. Well, I can see, like, aging beatniks in the Greenwich Village area going to a, you know, a bongo festival where he's there. Or something reading and it's cool but I don't know I'd ha yeah when I was th I'd say third grade or so um, uh, where the sidewalk ends became all the rage for teachers to read to the kids and I we I remember that we had a teacher in particular in third grade that would read these and I thought they were fantastic you know the one about the pancakes and 
The one I've been obsessed with lately is Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. Yes. It's a great, great poem. I'm sure uh, at some point Disney will pay his daughter $10 billion for the rights and they'll make it into a movie about a battle between monsters and galactic uh, robots or something. You know. It's small Yodas. The, the, uh, the flying shoe, it, the mechanics of the flying shoe must be explained, you know, because we must know. And, you know, anyway, get depressing here. Um, I had a fantastic weekend. I finished a painting and started a new one. Um, oh, that reminds me. I, so I finished a song. It was not my intention to do another album for a long time, but I was listening to some Joni Mitchell stuff, and she's a lot of her, most of her songs are done in, if you, guitar songs are done in open tunings. So it got me thinking about that. So I started fooling around with open tuning and I started writing a song and so I thought well why not do a whole album with open tunings now I don't know if I'm going to do the whole album with open tunings but anyway I posted this new song and the name of the album is The Open Song Project as sort of a tribute to open tunings Whether it, I, it, my original title was The Crazy Wheel Project and um, but anyway that's up on the channel if you want to watch it listen to it and then uh, I started writing a new song and it's happy and fun in contrast to my uh, work of the last three or four years so I'm gonna try to make the albums I mean, the, the songs more fun and uh, silly sort of inspired by Silverstein a little bit anyway there's that and um, just had a really great weekend you had a productive weekend didn't you Fairly. I didn't get as much cooking done as I had hoped, but I got a shit ton of cleaning done, and I finally come up with a compromise for um, something I can't deal with. Do you want to know what? What is it? Paperwork. Oh. We're, we're overwhelmed in paperwork. I have a shit ton of paperwork. It isn't just, you know, online sales and taxes. I mean... The medicine, the medical records that we have are insane, and all the different medical bills. And so I had just put papers in random boxes. Well, this weekend I went through and I put them in paper sized boxes. <laughs> so I'm able to stack them until such time as I go through and purge them or use them for whatever. I don't know. I mean, I went through a couple shredders, shredder loads full of discards this weekend, but so many things I just didn't, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, we've been dealing with a medical crisis since 2000 and, no, 1998, basically. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, on, in correlation to what you just said, um, I, I have no organization to my long-term paperwork. I, for example, I keep a list every year of all the paintings that I do that year, and I write them down. And um, I don't have, I don't know where all the previous lists are. I have no idea. So I need, and a bunch of that stuff is probably being eaten by mice at this moment at the old studio. Well, one of the things I found were lists from 2002 and 2003 that I had of photographs of your paintings. You still have those um, huge albums full of photographs I took back in the early 2000s of all your paintings. And I had um, a table of contents that went with those that had the title and generally the median and the um, size and the date of these things. I could not believe it. Anyway, it got shoved into a box. It's amazing. I've got a junk drawer where everything has its place. I have all these drawers that have little corners and boxes and things sealed up and marked and labeled. That I can deal with. But I cannot deal with fucking paperwork. Um, I was thinking just a little while ago about... <sighs> 
Oh, okay, what if we had a really traumatic car accident and I had my brain really messed up and I just lost all memory of my current life and I, and I was like a you know a child I had to start over again and I thought about what would I remember and then it got me to thinking about um, all the stuff that's in my head right now you've got 51 years worth of accumulated knowledge not just memories personal life memories but all the encyclopedic crap you know and how much more I'm gonna to have to stuff in my brain before I'm dead how does the brain, I mean, how do you, I mean, at some point you've got to be overloaded with crap, you know? Well, you know, my stepmom had, was in an accident. A drunk driver hit her, her mother, and her friend who had a cheerleading practice in high school. And so she was 16 or 17, and she was in the front seat with her mom. Her mom ended up in a wheelchair for life, later lost one of her legs because of it. And Stephanie ended up having such dramatic brain injury that she spent months and months in the hospital and had to relearn how to walk, talk, feed herself, and end up having to get a GED to get out of high school. She never went beyond that. And her way of coping was to become very set in her ways. She has a very regimented type of thing, so much so that even her writing is regimented. She writes everything in plain script. And she's actually had checks returned and questioned because of her, her script, the way that she writes. And I know that, you know, those type of things have long-term impacts on people. And I can't imagine, as resilient as her brain was at that age, here we are in our 50s. We wouldn't have that kind of resiliency. We wouldn't be able to bounce back like she did. We wouldn't be able to get you know, to start a whole new life. And she did. She she ended up moving away from home, far away from home, finding a job, working her way up in the ranks there. And, but if this kind of thing happened to us now, I don't think we, we would be able to bounce back in the same way. No, I just, you know, yeah. But I'll tell you something related to what that, that signature thing, what the cursive writing. When I was a little kid, I couldn't wait to learn how to write in cursive. Oh, this, that's grown-up people writing. Can't wait. Oh, my God. And so then, I don't know what, how old we were when we started. Uh, it was when I was going to public school. We started writing in cursive. And it, I found it to be a tedious, laborious task, like being chained to the oars on a, on a slave galley. And so I hated it, and and there was this constant, constant nagging at me. Your handwriting is illegible. It is no good. We must do this again. We'd, I'd get home from school, and my mother would get home from work, and she would get out some ancient book that she had lying around, and she'd make me copy out stuff from the book in cursive, and it was just horrible. So when I started going to private school, this is fourth grade, I just started writing, just printing everything, and it wasn't but a couple of days until the, the, my homeroom, homeroom teacher took me out in the hall, and she said, that school that you used to go to, did, did they not teach you cursive writing? And I said, uh, well, yeah, they did, but I just would prefer to print. I can't stand it. And nothing more was ever said. I've printed ever since. The only thing I write in cursive is my signature, and um, I just... I wouldn't be able to write in cursive today if you if you asked me to. I just hate it. I don't see the point. Anything to add? You and I were very different children. You were bound against everything. I excelled up at everything. <laughs> and I just went along to get along and you know, I was school patrol and honor society and I was a good little girl, you know, top of my class and all that kind of stuff. You, you were like Mr. Rebel. Well, um, <laughs> I excelled at uh, all kinds of stuff, goofing off, improvisational comedy during class time. <laughs> um, in seventh grade, they started, you went to the other side of the school and they had the demerit system for punishment. If you got, if you did something bad, you got however, however many demerits they felt the, their offense merited. And if you got 25, then you had to get um, a special uh, punishment. 
you get suspended for the day and have all this work to do. So in sixth grade, to get us ready for that, um, Mr. Roberts had a sort of pseudo demerit system and he had a chart up on the wall with everybody's names and he'd have a mark and they would show and Dwayne Peterson and I were tied for the most <laughs> proto demerits. We're your number one. We're number one. <laughs> and you know the funny thing is I didn't give a flying shit. When um I don't know how old I was, seventh or eighth grade, I got suspended for the day for that. Okay, we gotta we gotta hit the gas here and get in front of that dude. Let me drive please. Alright. Anyway so I got suspended for the day, and uh, it was the same day, the person that you don't want me to name was also right. suspended the same day, and we called each other from home and talked about being out for the day from school. But anyway, when my dad, I, they, my parents had long since abandoned corporal punishment because I was old, too old for that. But. Um, ooh, 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 tell me, tell, tell me again that story about your mom hitting you. Oh yeah, I did something bad. I must have been about 13 or so. I did something bad and she's, I'm as tall as she is at this point, maybe taller, and she started slapping me on the back and slapping me on the back of the neck and just beating and I stood there like, yeah. And she goes, that didn't hurt, did it? And I said, no. She goes, well then I have no choice but to send you away somewhere. So, but anyway, so when my dad found out that I was going to be suspended for the day, um, we were, we were, we had, we, we, we took a walk together across the street to my grandparents' house, and uh, he, he was, he found out, he was talking, I don't know what it was, but anyway, he said, well, you must be punished in some way for this. Uh, I just don't know. I guess I had shorts on. I can't remember. But he, he, we, in the South, we have a thing called a switch, where where your parents or grandparents will tear off a long springy branch or from a, like a willow. Yeah, Cynthia. yeah, and they'll swat you with it like a, like it's a whip, a whip on a on a and if you're truculent really mule. Bad, they'll grab a handful of switches. Anyway, so he did this and he swatted me on the back of the legs and it stung like a little bit, you know. And then he was like, nothing more I can do. It was just so, my parents came from this generation where you, you, you gotta do this. It's, you know, gotta do it. Gotta beat the child. And, you know, I, so foolish. We never spanked our kids. Sometimes I would get out of control and, and want to do something or grab them roughly, but... There was never any formal punishment where, now it is time for your punishment. Come with me to the back room and pull your oh, pants down and lean over room. my... They'd be sent to their room and taken away from privilege. Privileges taken away. Yeah. A lot of it had to do with privileges weren't earned. Yeah. Um, there would be delays getting something. Uh, honestly, we just... We were very different than our own parents like Phil taking his fist to me and banging me so hard and banging, I was sitting in this chair and he broke the arm off the chair. He was just fucking brute. That's my stepdad. Yeah. Um, I remember we used to have those charts up on the refrigerator and if the kids read a book, they got a penny per page. Oh yeah, that worked really well. For a while, until you stopped paying them, because we ran out of money. No, no, I stopped paying Reed because she kept reading the same books over and over again. That's what she, she said that she stopped reading because she was stop, she wasn't getting paid anymore. That's because she was reading the same books again and again. I said no. The whole point of this was for you not to read Harry Potter 15 times, but to try new things. And given how many books we had in our house, there was no excuse, none. Um, when I was 13, I started reading in earnest, and um, a couple months or so after I started just going crazy reading, um, my grandmother was driving me home or something, and she said, she said um, you ought to start keeping a list of all the books you read. 
and I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. So I have kept a list ever since then, ever since I was 13, of all the books I read, and it's several pages now. And um, you've read over 500 books, right? I've read about 1,200, 1,500 like yeah. that. And people go, oh, is that all you've read? And the like, well, oh my God, I got work and a family and, and guitar and playing. And, or in German, for God's sake. Yeah, all, all I read is German now. And I'm running out of stuff that I want to read. It's just, you think after 10 or 11 years of reading German, I'd be better at it by now. But. Don't you get through them? You understand them? Yeah. But I just, I want something that's sort of the ideal thing that I want to read is sort of current humorous literature. That's what I really want to read. And we don't have any of that in the house. Or if we do, it's sort of silly shit like uh, Leo Ro- Roasten and... No, no, no. I mean in German. Yeah. And I, yeah, I don't want any tr- American books translated into German. I find stuff that's been translated from English into German is very easy to read, and so I'm very suspicious. I'm like, oh, I read that too easily. I want to get some books by Torsten Strader. Um, Olaf Schubert has a new book out, but I, I heard it was um, not that good. All right, we're coming back on the end of the show. Let me double check here. Oh, yeah. So we've gone over the 20-minute limit. Can't go past that or bad things will happen. So anything to add? No. You never have anything to add? No. Advice for the listener? No. All right. See you later. Bye.